All right. Welcome, everybody, and happy Friday to you. It is the Reviews.org Friday live stream. Today is April 1st. I don't plan on any April Fool's Day stuff because I hate that crap. But uh, so, yeah, prank free April Fool's Day stream. There you go. Uh, that's your gift for today. Um, not a big practical joke guy myself. Uh, what was I going to say? Today, we're talking about Roku. Uh, kind of. We're talking about spring cleaning. I did a video this week. I think it just got released yesterday about spring cleaning my Fire TV. Kind of just wiping out a bunch of old unused apps, that sort of thing. So today, uh, I am going to do that with my Roku device as well. Okay, so I thought this would be fun because I wanted to get your take as well on, you know, the proper way to go about this sort of thing, right? The proper way to think about uh, about apps on our devices, how long we should leave them leave them on there, should we ever delete an app, which apps are worth deleting. So, you know, it'll be fun to uh, have some arguments in the comments uh, during this stream, but keep it civil, keep it nice, uh, and we will have a lot of fun doing this. Don't forget to go to reviews.org slash giveaways. You can enter to win a $50 Amazon gift card. Uh, and also while you're there, poke around the site. See if there's some reviews that you want to go check out. I promise there are. All right. So with that out of the way, uh, I'm going to just uh, before we get started with everything, say hi to everybody. Uh, William Mack. Hello from North Central Idaho. He says, North Central Idaho. I, I when I was a teenager, I used to go hiking up in the Sawtooths uh, in North Central Idaho. Is that? Yeah, that seems about right. That's about the right area. Anyway, so hello, William Mack. Let's see, Paul from Southwest Minnesota. Uh, let's see, David, Stacy, uh, Adam, who called me Greg. I I know that's a troll. Yeah. Or, okay. <laughs> uh, let's see, where am I? What is truth? Who am I? Time is a flat circle. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. I watched that this morning, says Paul. You are brutal on your apps. I was. I was deliberately brutal in that video. Uh, for a few reasons. First of all, I use my Fire TV less than some of my other devices. And so that was, you know, that's uh, that's my own situation where I, you know, when I do pop in on my Fire TV, it's usually not for um, any of the, you know, any of the more obscure apps or even some of the ones that I, I like, but, you know, just don't use as often. So I was deliberately pretty brutal on that. And that was partly just to get you know, get a little conversation going in the comments um, about just stuff like this. Am I am I too brutal? We're going to talk about that today. Um, all right. So let's see. Hello, Frayden, Sylvia. Uh, hello from West Philly. All right. We have. I don't know if we've had any Philly yet. So I'm glad you're here, Jay. Welcome. This is fantastic. Ohio. On Facebook, Diana on Facebook, uh, you know, for those who don't know, we do simultaneously cast this, simulcast, if you will, on YouTube and on Facebook. So either way, if you uh, find us in either place, you'll be able to catch my Friday live streams. And I love seeing these Facebook comments come in because, uh, you know, they we do mostly get YouTube comments. So I like seeing the Facebook people here as well. Uh, Shelton, Washington. Wow. OK, I haven't thought about Shelton in a while. Uh, OK. Oh, you know what? We need to do this. Adam is correct. Can we get your time as a flat circle on the Craig is always right mug? <laughs> Should we? We'll put it on the bottom of the mug, you know, so that like time is this is it's this flat circle right here. Okay, so I think that's a great idea. Uh, Baton Rouge. <laughs> uh, is there? Ah, oh, this is great, Pam. Fantastic suggestion. I love this. I don't think there is. I, I don't think there's a way. So the question is, is there a way to tell the last time that you used or accessed the app to know if you recently used it? This would be great. Oh, man. Pam, you're a freaking genius. I love this. Okay, I'm writing this down on my screen here or on my uh, my note-taking app. Um, app suggestions. I've actually got a list of app suggestions that I, uh, that I put out there every so often. And this is going on my list. Um, uh, be able to sort apps by uh, most recently used uh, or whatever. So we can tell um, which ones we never use. I love this. I love this so much. So, uh, okay. So Pam, fantastic idea. 
uh, I see you're on warrior mode. I don't know what that is. I don't know what warrior mode is. I, but I'm always on warrior mode. If by that we think of the classic friends episode where Ross is talking about Unagi. Um, that's, that's me. I, I am Unagi. It's not something you are. It's something you have. <laughs> uh, okay. So, all right, let, let's, let's, uh, pull up the, let's pull up the Roku. So someone said you, you know, that, that I was too brutal. I was brutal with my fire TV. Okay. So we're not going to spend a ton of time on every single one of these apps. Uh, but I, I do think that we'll have uh, some fun uh, scrolling through here and seeing, you know, kind of what can go and what can stay and the reasoning behind that. I'll, I'll kind of walk you through, excuse me, I feel like I'm going to sneeze. I'll walk you through my reasoning on why uh, I will let certain things stay or, or kick them out. But uh Let's see. Uh, okay, so Sylvia, yeah, Sylvia makes a good point. Fire TV holds your apps in the cloud so you can always retrieve them later. That's true. Um, yeah, like I said in the video, you can always, you can delete them from your device, you know, and of course they keep track of which ones you have had in the past, right? This is kind of what we're talking about here. But you can delete them from your device or you can just hide them on your device so that they remain downloaded but uh, they don't show up in your app list. Why would you want to do that? Um, the reasoning, excuse me, man, I am, allergies are crazy. It must be spring, April 1st. Um, why would I do that? Oh yeah, I gave the example of IMDb TV. IMDb TV is a great app. They've got a lot of good stuff on there, but I never, and I mean never, go to IMDb TV and browse. I just don't do it. Um, that's not to say that you shouldn't or that, you know, that it's not worth doing, whatever. That's not what I'm trying to say. I just don't do it. And so I don't have a need for that app to be anywhere that I can click on it. Uh, but having it on still on my device on here, let's uh, make this a little smaller for now. Having IMDb TV still on my Fire TV device means that if I search for something, if I search for a title and it's available on IMDb TV, then I can still watch it there without re-downloading the app, right? Does that make sense? So there are, I think, situations where you'd want to hide an app instead of deleting it. Um, everybody's preferences and situations are different, right? So, um, ah, this is a great question. How about how much storage space does a typical app use? Ooh, excellent question. Um, Let's look up the answer and see if, let's see if I can find it. Um, I, I don't know the answer to that question. I did at one point, uh, you know, a few years ago. I, I think I looked into that a little bit. I think I had that issue pop up because uh, it was my Chromecast. The Chromecast device uh, filled up really quickly because the uh, the operating system on the device is so robust that it didn't leave tons of room for apps. So it had the same kind of like, I think it was like eight gigs of storage space, but a huge chunk of that was the operating system. So you just didn't have a ton of room left for apps. Um, uh, in megabytes. All right, so yeah, let's see if I can find the answer to your question. No, 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 no. Okay, well, you know, I wonder, I don't think that they list it here, but I wonder if they will tell us uh, here on the Roku. So if we go to streaming channels, yeah, I don't think it's going to give us that information, but it's possible. Let's just pick one at random. Comedy, sure. Let's go, yeah, Comedy Central. I bet that's a pretty popular one. There we go. Uh, oh, no, this is, no, that's the version. 3.2, okay. And they're not going to show me. So you know, I know the answers are out there. We just have to do a little bit of a uh, little bit of investigating. So it's a great question, though. Um, that might be something to look into. My suspicion is that uh, if you looked at average app size, then um, like Prime Video would be fairly small because everything is compressed to death. Like all the images, all the text, everything is compressed to death so that you can load it up faster. Uh, but it looks awful, looks terrible, um, but it does work pretty quickly versus say the, uh, let's see, where did it go? Um, 
HBO Max. HBO Max looks gorgeous. A an excellent looking app. It's just a pleasure to scroll through, but trying to load that app up takes forever. And so I, I suspect it's not like, there's not a standard size. I bet there's a pretty good spread. Um, and I, I bet that HBO Max is one of the big ones. So, uh, okay. Aha, uh -huh. David, with a good point. This is another advantage of streaming versus cable. Trying to get rid of some cable channels. <laughs> Try getting rid of some cable channels that you're not interested in. Absolutely. You know what? This is a great point. That's a great point. As Paul said. Um... <laughs> Malka. Okay, all right. We won't delete Malka. All right, that's fine. Aha. Um... Uh -huh. One hot mess, 99. Does that mean you're born in 99 or that you've been a hot mess for 99 years uh i feel like that's what i'm going to be saying on my 100th birthday uh, i turned one and it all went downhill from there uh, went from 80 apps to 54 on my roku thank you craig you know and it's it, how vital is this okay so this is what we're doing today and what i did in the video earlier this week how vital is this it's not i mean if you are somebody who habitually goes and downloads new apps, eventually you'll run out of space on your device uh, and you'll probably have to delete some, uh, you know, but that's, most of us probably won't run into that unless it's an exceptionally small uh, device. Uh, but I think there is something to the the psychological effect. So when I, when I pop into my Roku, let's see. So, okay, so we start at the top. We pop into Roku. It's like, what do I want to watch? Like, I could watch something on Netflix or Hulu. What else do we have? And then you scroll and you scroll and you scroll and you scroll. And you're like, oh my gosh, I'm overwhelmed. I can't, oh, this is too much. I can't take this. Um, and so I think there's something to the psychological aspect of just kind of clearing out the the clutter, right? I mean, we're, we're Marie Kondoing the crap out of our streaming devices, right? Is this sparking joy? Get it out of here, right? <laughs> something like that. Uh, so, okay. So let's spring clean our uh, our device here, and I'm going to get your input as I go. Okay, so first things first, let's count up the number, the total number of tiles. Right now it says one of 57 items. Okay, now what I'm curious about is, does that count? Yes, it does count these. So we have 57 items, including the ad channels and TV off. Okay, so First of all, let's see if we can get rid of these. The ad channels and TV off. I mean, I've got the power button right here. I don't need the TV off. I, I can see, you know, this is on the Roku Ultra, not the Roku TV. And so, you know, I can see some situations where the you don't get to just use the power button. So you want to use this one, but I don't need that. All right. So let's come up here to our settings. I know there's a place to do it. I just need to find uh, exactly where it is. Again, I'm going to come here to home screen. Uh, let's see, live TV. Oh, it's down here in shortcuts. That's right. So add channels and TV off. Okay, perfect. Now they're gone. And so now we're already down from 57 to 55. Um, at one point, I will say at one point I had 108, I want to say 108 apps on my Roku. Uh, and then it was maybe a year, year and a half ago, something like that. I kind of did one of these minor cleanings and took it down by half. <laughs> Today, we're going to be a little bit more brutal than that. Okay, so you can take those off. That's good. There's also this part right here. We've got home, featured free, live TV, movie store, TV store, streaming channels, my feed, settings. All right, so how many of those do we really need? Um, this is, again, this is just me doing this. Okay, so we, uh, so, you know, make your own judgment calls, but we're going to go back to home screen here. And go, let's see, do I ever use featured free? I don't. When the uh, when the what to watch tab comes up, I bet that I will use that a lot. But right now I don't use featured free. Um, I don't really do live TV often, but sometimes I do. And I do have an antenna plugged into this TV. And so, uh, so I am gonna leave that. Movie store and TV store, I am probably gonna... Uh, I'll probably hide that. I might bring it back at some point, but okay. So now when we go here again, we're just decluttering. So now if you look over there uh, on, I guess it's, it's my left, your right, whatever. <laughs> then we've already taken off two menu items there. It's a little cleaner, a little easier to deal with. All right. So let's see what you, 
Oh, Tony only has 24 apps. Nice. Nice. Um, yeah, this is the case for me as well, Neil. Run out of storage room easily on my Google TV dongle, but it's never been an issue with never been an issue with Roku. Uh, Roku homepage not as pretty as Google, but as long as res let's see, as long as the resolution is good, I don't care. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of one of those things. Like, could the Roku homepage be more attractive? Sure, you know, I'm sure they could find a way to make it pretty prettier. But it's such an institution at this point, and it's so familiar to so many people that it would be very um, risky. It would be very risky to change it, even if it was, especially if it was a big change, right? If they were doing a huge, um, uh, you know, a huge redesign of the Roku homepage, that would be extremely risky. Uh, and so that's why when I suggested which I'm sure the idea came entirely from me. I take full credit for the Roku what to watch tab, but I, I, it was my suggestion that, Hey, just put it on this list on the left, uh, put it, you know, recommendations or in this case, what to watch and just put it there on the left. So you have a different screen to go to, because this one right here is so it's such an iconic institution to so many people that, yeah, we don't want to mess with that. Um, all right. <laughs> are people really browsing for something to watch that much you know everybody has a different style so david it sounds like it's not your style to go to those recommendations to use the recommendations uh but a lot of people do i i use it uh pretty often i whenever i use my google tv i'm i kind of breathe a sigh of relief because they're so good at suggesting titles for me to watch um, but some people know exactly what they're going for. And so they don't want to have to browse through all that stuff. They just want to, you know, use the voice search and say, show me this title. And, and that's it. Um, all right. Wait, let's see. I feel like I, oh yeah, that's right. I wanted to pull this one up. Pam says at one point I had over 300 apps on my Roku stick, but I'm down to around a hundred, a hundred, 300. That's, uh, that's a lot. That's a lot. Nobody's using 300 apps. <laughs> so, all right, let's uh, uh, let's get started with this. As I answer this one, no, I don't. I, I no longer do. I cut the cord in 2016. I want to say, kind of around the time that we started this channel, I cut the cord and haven't looked back since. I don't. Need, well, yeah, okay. We'll just leave it there. Uh, okay. So let's go over. All right, all right let's keep track of the ones that we definitely want. Okay, so I'm going to go through here, first things first, and, and get the ones that we definitely want. Netflix, Hulu, Tubi, those are all must-haves. Let's see, the live TV on the Roku channel. The thing is, I can pop into the Roku channel, or I can come over here to live TV uh, and get the exact same thing. And that's going to be, I think that's going to be a recurring theme for us here, is what can you do? Oh, am I freezing up on my live TV zone? Uh-oh. Uh, okay. Well, anyway, yeah, I know you can get it here in the live TV zone. And so if there are overlaps where, like, I'm, I'm not just going to click on live TV on the Roku channel, so I'll probably get rid of that. Okay. But anyway, we'll come back to that in a bit. Wondrium Prime Video. Okay. So Prime Video, I know I want to keep. So I'm going to press the star key that brings up my menu here and just go up to move channel and kind of, we'll, we'll start stacking the important ones up top. All right, the Roku channel, we'll keep. Uh, this is actually kind of difficult because there's a little delay on the Roku itself, and then there's also a delay with the screen sharing. <laughs> so this is gonna be difficult to uh, to navigate. All right, uh, Paramount Plus, we better keep that one. Uh, we're gonna move that up here with the Roku channel. Uh, let's see, BritBox, I don't know if we'll keep that one. Pluto, we'll probably keep. Fubo is an interesting one. Um, we're gonna talk about the competing live TV streamers in a bit here, okay? But we're gonna move, we'll move Pluto up here with those, we like keeping that around. HBO Max, obviously, Apple TV, obviously. Um, <laughs> let's see, Matt says that, uh, that Roku has an 80s feel and you don't like it. Um, I understand. I wonder if that's because of the color, like the purple color with the sharp edges um, kind of feels a little, maybe a little retro. Maybe that's what you're identifying. I'm not sure. I'm actually going to move HBO Max up uh, kind of onto the top row because I use that one a lot. 
Okay, news on PBS Canopy. Sling, again, we're going to talk about that. Oh, that's right. Apple TV. We've got to move that up. Moving on up. Okay, and I actually do use this one quite a bit, so we're going to move that toward the top. Uh, the other one we're looking at, Disney Plus, that's got to go up there. It's uh, one of the weird things about when you get a new Roku device is that the apps aren't in the same order on every device. It doesn't, so you can kind of change the app order on each device, as far as I can tell. And so sometimes when I use a device that I haven't used in a little while, it takes me forever to find certain things. Uh, YouTube, we're definitely keeping that one. All right. Um Let's see. So let's see. Nandom says, why do we have different zoning for some of the channels? I'm using the Roku, however, from Nigeria. Yeah, it's it's licensing issues, right? So if you are, um, yeah, we're going to move this one up pretty high, I think just before Tubi. Uh, yeah, licensing issues is the big one. You know, you may be licensed to, um, to have certain content or certain apps in some territories and then not in others. Uh, so that's I think that's all that comes down to is uh, the legal side of it. If they, I, I'm sure that for the sake of simplicity, um, if they could have a uniform app as you know as uniform as possible, I'm sure they'd all love to. And who was it that? Oh, that's right, HBO Max and Discovery. They're doing their big merger, and um, and this issue with different zoning is apparently on their minds because they're going to try to make as internationally uniform an experience as possible. Again, there will be issues with licensing uh, in certain territories, but uh, but they have stated that that is their intention is to have uh, you know a uniform experience. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. Oh yeah, this was interesting. Apple TV had a great week. First streamer to win an Oscar, indeed. Yeah. Uh, MLB. Uh, you know, and David, I should use that because uh, I I always talk up Apple TV Plus, and so now that it's more ammo in my belt. So MLB for six months out of the year, this kind of ends up getting buried under some of the other apps. But for the next six months or so, I'm going to be using this one straight up daily. Uh, I love Major League Baseball, and so that one is is going on there. Okay, what's uh, what's next? I feel like we've that's a lot of the must-haves, the absolute must-haves, must-watch. Uh, Discovery Plus will probably go up there, um, and then some of the other ones we'll see. We will see. I don't know. Like I said at the beginning, I don't know if I'm going to be as brutal um, with my Roku as I was with my um, Fire TV. Uh, the what was it? I think it was on the Fire TV Cube. Um, but, but we'll see. Okay. Discovery plus that's going to kind of come up here around the, yeah, Paramount plus or so. Okay. All right. So, you know what, let's start at the bottom and work our way up. Um, and, and again, I'm going to give you some of my justifications, uh, but some of them we're just going to go ahead and delete like Roku getting started. This is great. If you just bought your very first Roku, but I don't think I need this anymore. And they're not going to let me. Oh, yeah. Remove channel. Good. Okay. <laughs> I didn't see delete on there. So I was like, oh, no, they're not going to let me delete it. Uh, so there's some other ones kind of like that. Uh, kids and family on the Roku channel. So this is a good one where it's like, uh, you know, this is overlap. The Roku channel, I can just go into the into the Roku channel and um, uh, and I can go to the kids and family section. You may not want to delete this if you just give your kids the remote and say, okay, go, you know, watch TV on the Roku. You may want them to have this shortcut so that they don't have to go through the Roku app to get there. Uh, that's not the case for me. Uh, with my kids, I actually, on the Roku TV in the house, um, I have the Chromecast plugged in with some pretty, pretty severe parental controls on it. And so, and so they never get the Roku remote because then they could control the TV. I just give them the Chromecast remote, which turns on the TV and does the volume, but it only gives them access to like four apps, I think. And each of those apps is just logged into a kid's profile, right? So anyway, so I don't need that on there. Um, there was, what was the other one? I think it was the, um, 
Oh yeah, Bluetooth. So you can go right here to, it's like a shortcut to your Bluetooth audio settings. Uh, but I don't use a ton of Bluetooth on here. Oh, they're not going to let me get rid of it. Unbelievable. Um, oh boy, I wish I could get rid of that. Okay, so that one's going down, way down to the end. Okay. Um, yeah, it, and it also has, uh, it's in the settings menu, so you don't need that shortcut. Sorry, I was getting a little distracted here. Okay, where was the other one? Oh, Roku Media Player. Now we're keeping the Roku Media Player. Tips and Tricks is going to go. Um, just again, this is for me. I don't really need the Roku Tips and Tricks. Although this is a nice one to have when uh, when they do an update. If you're not big on like going and researching the update and reading all about it, and you just want to see what they're highlighting, it's not a bad one to keep around. I just don't feel like I need that right now in my life. Okay, so PlayStation View, I will never, and I do mean, I, I will never delete the PlayStation View app just because I don't know why at this point. It's, you know, it's just part of my my Roku experience to have this little purple box that says PlayStation View is no longer available. I can't let go. Can't let go. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, uh. Do, do, do. Let's see. So how much memory, and I, I assume you mean by that storage space, how much does the Roku have? All the other devices have eight gigs or 32 gigs. I'm sure it depends on the device. Um, uh, Roku, I think most of them are eight. Um, okay, let's see if I can find, because I, I can tell you for individual devices, but, um, but I wonder if there's a uh, Something here that'll give me a comparison. Yeah, a comparison chart. Here we go. Uh, huh, huh, huh. Are there, They're not actually going to tell me. They're only going to tell me the, the RAM on this. Oh, that's too bad. Um, yeah, I think it's usually 8 gigs. But it depends on the device. Some of them may be more. Yeah, some of them may be more like the 32. That's weird. That's weird that they wouldn't. So I'm I'm on Roku.com right now. Here I'll just show you. Um, let me do this. Share my screen. Share that screen. Um, is it just me or is it weird that on developer.roku.com they're not going to show me the uh, storage space? storage capacity on the different devices so here's their list of different devices and yeah they don't list it that's that's odd huh oh well oh well okay let's get back to this uh but that's a good question all right so now we got to start flying through some of these making some decisions uh let me know uh, if you guys, if, if I do something that really just, just, you know, breaks your heart, <laughs> let me know. But all right, Vivo is really cool. This one often makes my, um, it often makes my like top 10 lists for like hidden gems and stuff like, hey, you can go watch music videos. If you throw a lot of parties or something, you can turn on Vivo or Excite, which is the same, it's the same app, just with different names. Um, and you, so you can have music videos playing on your TV, uh, you know, during your party, whatever. Uh, or if you're in a restaurant or something like that would be, and you, you want to have music videos going, then great. It's a great app, but I, I don't ever use it. It's cool, but I don't use it. Same thing with NASA. Very cool. I just don't use it. Um, so I, I'm not against bringing it back. I can re-download it at some point if I need to. Plex is staying. IMDb TV, like I said before, it can go. I just never go in and browse on it. Uh, although, I do need to keep it. Um, if you know, if I want to watch titles on it, I do need to keep it. So, okay, fine, I'll keep it. Um, Stir can go. All right, so let's talk live TV streamers. We're going to talk about the paid ones, but with the free ones, somebody else said just a moment ago... Um, that there we go. Roy Jones said Pluto is the apex of free streaming, and I cannot argue with that. In fact, I 
agree with that. So all the other ones that aren't quite um, up to up to snuff <laughs> can be deleted. In fact, I think you only need really one of those. Yeah, they do have some different um, they do have some different content every once in a while, but uh, it for the most part is basically the same stuff. And Pluto has the best stuff out of them, so we can get rid of them. All right. Uh, let's see. Music apps. All I use is Spotify. So we get rid of iHeartRadio. Remove that. Hoopla and Canopy, um, which are not together right now, but Hoopla and Canopy are the ones where you can use your local libraries, well, library of content and you can watch it, you can stream it. Um, but it has been probably two years since I did that. <laughs> so... Uh, again, those ones make a lot of my top 10 lists, but we don't need them right now. Uh, okay. PBS, similarly, um, PBS is one of those ones where I just, I, I love that it exists. I just never use it myself. So please not canopy, says <laughs> says Robert. Sorry. No, it's, again, with a lot of these, they're great apps. Like News On, I actually like it. I like News On a lot. How much do I use it? I'm not sure. We're going to come back to that. But my kids use PBS Kids quite a bit, um, even if I don't. Uh, let's see, News On versus Haystack. This is basically the same thing. Well, in, in large measure, I think they carry different channels, but I prefer Haystack. I think they have a better interface for, you know, for how I use these things. Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna get, oh, nope. I think I said move. I want remove. All right. Baby Boomer TV. Where did that... I just saw it somewhere. Yeah, Baby Boomer TV. That can go. Very cool idea. Um, and I would leave that on my my aunt and uncle, the, the, the Boomer TVs in my life. I would leave that there. <laughs> bon Appetit can go. So what did we start at? We, we started at 57 apps, I want to say. I wonder what we're at now. I think we're down to 42. Yeah, I've already deleted 17 at least tiles. Okay. So um Paul says Stir has always behaved clunky and hard to navigate on my Apple TV compared to Pluto. Yeah, and that's that's so much of it is kind of the experience even beyond just the content, it's the experience of using an app. Um I it's my belief that if HBO Max and now what is it Warner Discovery whatever it's called the new thing if they want HBO Max to be as big a thing as Netflix and, uh, you know, Hulu or Disney Plus or whatever, they need to make their interface uh, more responsive, basically. It's very pretty, but it's uh, kind of a pain in the butt to load. And that, so anyway, I'm just comparing that with Stir, where it's like, yeah, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with the content that they're offering compared to something like Pluto. Uh, but it's just, yeah, it's very clunky, very tough to navigate all right dust uh I, oh i'm kind of torn on this we're maybe you know what i'm gonna move this down to the bottom because it is a very cool uh very cool app if you're up late you know it's 11 30 and you're like ah, i should go to bed but i kind of want to watch one more thing then dust has not only cool sci-fi stuff but it has shorts and so you know stuff that you can watch in three minutes or 10 minutes or, you know, whatever. It has a lot of short content, which I actually quite like. So I'm not ready to get rid of that. The weather channel I can get rid of. And I'll tell you why, because I can just act, ask my echo what the weather is today. What's the five day forecast? What? And I, I can get the info so easily. Um, so this app is and I, I understand there's a lot more to it than that. That just that's all that I would use it for. Same with Weather Nation. So I know that there's more to the Weather Channel than just the forecast. I get it, uh, but that's all that I would ever use it for. Um. Oh, okay. Robert says as long as he does not nix my Criterion, if he has it, I do not have Criterion on my uh, on my Roku. I think I have or had it on my Apple TV. If I remember right, oh, I'm not totally sure. I, I know I've used the Criterion channel before and it's great, but I don't think we're going to have to worry about that here today. So let's see. 
Spotify, we use a lot. Voodoo, I never use. I just never, these days I never use it. Um, so we're going to remove that one. Film Rise, uh, similarly. So this is like one of those, um, Film Rise is a, a Netflix imitator, uh, kind of like Tubi, but Tubi is so much better. Um, so we're going to remove Film Rise. Um, with the understanding that yeah we might we might bring it back at some point espn we're gonna keep uh because that is where i can access some espn plus content um especially during hockey season so we're gonna leave that there crackle crackle can go believe it or not i like crackle but it can go so we're gonna remove this one they did just score a tv show that i i think i really liked at one point i can't remember what it was but again if i it's not like this is an irreversible decision. Philo, sorry, Philo, you're out of here. Um, again, one of those one of those cool apps that I just I don't see a lot of use for because the Philo app or the Philo concept is all the live TV channels that you had on cable except news and sports. And as we talked about last week, if you're on that live stream, we talked about news and sports being basically the only things that are staying afloat uh, when it comes to linear TV these days. Uh, linear meaning, you know, live scheduled TV. Uh, news and sports are just about the only things that are surviving. Um, and so without those, honestly, Philo just, uh, as great it as it was, you know, a couple of years ago, a few years ago, it just doesn't hold a lot of appeal to me now. So Retro Crush, uh, I, I think I had that one on there for a, a Hidden Gems, and it is very cool. I just don't watch a ton of anime. Um, so we're going to leave Verve or VRV, however you say it. Uh, let's see. Peacock, we can keep Shudder. I, oh, I, I'm going to bring this one back in the fall. When it's horror movie time, I'll bring this back because uh, I really like Shudder. But I, right now I'm trying to clean up my device. So. Uh, Lego Channel. My kid loves Lego Channel. Haystack News. I like that. So we're going to keep it. D Direct TV Stream. We can definitely get rid of. Uh huh. Okay. So again, we started at 57 apps. We're down to 33, you guys. 33 apps. Uh, let's see how far we can go. Okay. So let's talk about paid live TV streamers. We've got Sling, we've got Fubo. We've got YouTube TV. Obviously, we have Hulu, but that Hulu stays in the, it's in the Hulu app. If you get Hulu Live, it's just right there. So we don't have to worry about that one. Well, let's talk about Fubo, Sling, and YouTube TV. I'm going to keep all three of these. Not because I, uh, well, I'll, I'll just tell you, I'll tell you why. This is one of those, like, it's, it's just part of my experience as a reviewer that, with the live TV streamers, uh, reviews.org has uh, subscriptions to all of these. And so we'll often have to compare, you know, okay, so, but how's the streaming quality here? And how's the, uh, you know, the interface on this one? And, you know, maybe some title is available over here and not over there. So we keep, uh, you know, an open subscription to all of these. Um, and I do end up using those for comparison reasons a lot. So we're gonna put those together. Um, there we go. We'll put them together so that they're at least, yeah, at least in the same spot. Uh, like I said, live TV on the Roku channel. I can always just click on other buttons. That's a, this is kind of a, it's, what's the word I'm looking for? Redundant. It's a redundant channel. Are you sure you want to remove live TV on the Roku channel? Uh, I am, I am sure. I can bring it back if I need to. Okay. So let's see. Tetris. Yeah. Sorry. I, <laughs> this is out of here. Did you guys ever, Oh, this is, Oh yeah. This one's got the one and two buttons on it. The here, let's blow this up a little bit. The uh, remotes for the Roku ultra or the stream bar pro that have the one and the two on them. Uh, in the early days of the Roku ultra, they were slightly differently placed. And, and the idea was you could, you could use it like a game controller uh, for things like Tetris. Um, but they, the lag time was bad enough on the, on the remote that it just didn't, didn't work very well. Um, 
Let's see. Uh, isn't Shutter paid? Uh, as I, let's see. I'm as I'm not free, but you're erasing it. Uh, I, I I don't know what you mean by the last part, but Shutter is a paid app. I think it's five or seven bucks a month, something like that. It's not a ton. Um, and if you love horror movies, it really is a, a very very good app with some great content on there. Um, but yeah, I am deleting that one just because you know tis not the season. You might say. <laughs> not not a lot of horror stuff going on in my house right now. BritBox. Somebody extolled, you know, my having BritBox and said, you know, hey, I'm so happy that Craig has BritBox. Well, sorry to disappoint you, uh, but goodbye, BritBox. Um, it's very cool. I just don't use it. And that's yeah, going to be a constant recurring theme. Wondrium, honestly, I don't even remember what that is. And I'm not going to look. I I probably used it for like a week when I was, uh, you know, getting ready to do a top 10 uh, channels thing. And was like, hey, this is cool, Wondrium. And I haven't opened it since. So, uh, all right. I think we're looking pretty good. We've got Spotify. We've got Plex. Those are must-haves. Uh, Verve, you know, we're going to get rid of this one. Uh, again, I don't watch a ton of anime, uh, but when I do, I will do an updated, you know, best places to watch anime video uh, here sometime pretty soon. And when I do that, I'll probably re-download some of these. Uh, but for now, I, I don't need it here. So uh, let's see. We've got our live TV streamers. We've got our on-demand streamers. The Roku Media Player, this is where you go. Like if you have a if you have a thumb drive or something that you plug into the back of your Roku TV uh, or into the back of your Roku Ultra and it's got your photos or it's got movies on it maybe or uh, you know music that you want to be able to stream, then this is the Roku Media Player is where you can do that. I don't have anything plugged in like that right now. So I can't demonstrate, but uh, but yeah, that one is very useful. So we're going to leave that there. We're down to 28 items. We started at, what did we say, 57? It, correct me if I'm wrong. It was either 53 or 57. I think it was 57. And um, we got rid of a couple of shortcuts and a whole bunch of apps. And we're down to 28. So now, it kind of what I was talking about um, at the beginning of the video was this isn't necessarily about like, I hate these apps. Um, that's That's not it at all. It's just... It can be overwhelming if you come in here and there's, <laughs> who was it said she had 300 tiles at some point? Like that would, it would just be overwhelming. And here I can scroll through it just like that. 28 items, that's nine rows with one left over and that's it. So I, I have 10 rows of apps now, uh, very, very quick to scroll through, um, you know, a lot less overwhelming. And I can obviously move, up or down the ones that I use the most often. And honestly, can I tell you guys something that I am not being paid to say? Uh, but ever since I got the uh, the Roku set, the 5.1 surround in here, so I've got the Stream Bar Pro, the subwoofer, and four um, uh, wireless speakers. Ever since I got that successfully set up, uh, I'm in Spotify a lot. Uh, it is a pleasure to listen to music on this uh, on this setup. And I understand the sound quality on Spotify isn't the best out there. I get that. But you know what? It's good enough to sound great on these speakers. So uh, let's see. Let's move one more up. Okay. I want to move one more up and I'll show you why. So we're going to take Peacock, which I do use somewhat kind of often. We'll move that. Um, yeah, we'll move that to this row just so that my, this is why. So that I have all these on the same row because I'm kind of picky that way all right um britbox isn't the best as astro josh I, I wish it was sooner than a year behind the uk yeah i mean <laughs> always would be nice right i say remove that playstation notice you don't know what you're asking william mac i was i was very attached to playstation view when it was kind of the heyday the playstation view heyday um i and it it oh, you know, we made a fun video out of it, but it, it did kind of hurt. It was like, oh no, it was the best. It, it was for a while, the most expensive live TV streamer. Um, and then all the other ones kind of caught up to it, but it's claim to fame was it was the most expensive, but it was also the fastest and best looking. So it was, it was faster and had better quality video than Sling TV, 
then Hulu Live, then, oh, let's see, was YouTube TV around at that point? I think it was. Anyway, uh, so so PlayStation View was like, it was in my heart as the best cable replacement for a while. Um, and then when it went away, it hurt. It hurt, okay? So you don't know what you're asking, William Mack. No trucking-related content? Boy, I need to stop telling you guys about all my side projects. <laughs> uh is this okay so yeah astro josh brings up another point uh it'll close soon from the funimation merger yeah uh very very possibly uh britbox i'll have to check that one out you know this is a great point i hope that as i'm deleting things i hope that some of you are like hey that actually looks pretty cool because often they are um so there there's stuff like if i go back over here um let's see stuff that i use fairly often like my kids use the lego channel a lot. They watch it quite a bit. Um, and it's one of those things where I found it just randomly looking for stuff to feature on a top 10 hidden gems. And I was like, oh my gosh, Lego has its own streaming channel. They do. And it's great. It's actually really, really fun. Um, and so you never know what you'll come across in random videos like this one. So, uh, oh, this is a good question. Where did Roku put all the Quibi content? That is in the Roku channel so if we go to the roku channel here let me blow that up a little bigger again if we go to the roku channel roku originals is where all the quibi content ended up uh, this isn't one of them the newsreader is uh came out of australia they they bought that from whoever airs that in australia um featuring anna torv one of my all-time favorites she was the lead on fringe one of my all-time favorite tv shows so i need to get to that one um but yeah, you can you can look through. So uh, yeah, here's a title that I remember watching on Quibi. Most Dangerous Game. And I'll tell you what. Oh, season. Oh, they actually kept it split into episodes. Oh, wow. I wish they hadn't. I wish they would just put them all together. But check this out. So it's a movie. But if you look close, I know it's kind of hard to see, especially if you're watching on a phone. But uh, you can see 7 minutes and 32 seconds. 8 minutes, 50 seconds. 8 minutes nine minutes, five minutes. And they they put these out and it was like, they, they put out the first six or something. And then the rest came out like every day for another week or two. And it was the dumbest way to watch a movie <laughs> that I have ever experienced. It was so bad. There were, and they, they tried to, if you guys remember Quibi, they had the thing where, um, you know, if you're watching on your phone, so you had your phone, and you could tilt it and it would change the aspect ratio. And so, um, you know, some titles would make use of that. So it's like if you there there was one, it was like a it, it was like a marketing video for ring doorbells. I want to say it might have been one of the other brands, but it was one of those uh, one of those video doorbells. And they had this this thing where if you watched it in portrait mode, then you saw. I'm trying to get this right. It's one way or the other. If you watched it in portrait mode, you saw what the the video doorbell saw. And if you flipped it, then it would show you uh, in landscape mode, it would show you the uh, the girl in her house as she was doing stuff. And then the 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 movie, the short film, I guess you'd call it, was a guy comes to the door, knocks on the door, is trying to trick his way inside. You know, a man with malintent and she won't open the door so he starts breaking down the door and so you could constantly flip between the two and and it was really interesting very dynamic very fun to watch uh or i shouldn't you know fun i mean it's a <laughs> terrible violent situation potentially but it was cool um and then there were titles like like most dangerous game where you could either watch it in landscape mode and it just looked like a normal movie or you flip it into portrait mode and it would be the exact same thing, but just a really cramped version. Uh, like they would, they would just cut it off and show you portrait mode. And it was so agonizing to watch. So between those two things, drove me absolutely crazy. Um, <laughs> the movie itself wasn't bad. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. Uh, but this is just, just not a, not a great way to watch it. Um, but yeah, where did all the Quibi content go? That, that was it. That's where it all went. So, uh, all right. <laughs> uh, 
So let's see, I still download my music MP3 files. All right. Uh, let's see, something I can still clearly get for free. So this is, it, it depends on the file, right? Some artists, you know, they, they want you to just get their stuff for free. Others don't, you know, and I, um, not a big fan of, of piracy. I don't know if that's what you're talking about, but like, I, you know, when I was a kid, it was like, oh yeah, I'd download everything on LimeWire. Um, you know, until, <laughs> you know, Russian hackers knew everything about me, you know, whatever. I don't know. Um, Let's see. Let's go back to our homepage here. The same curation process people should go through on their phones. Uh, like, or is that what what we've done here? Like, this that that would be a whole different ball game if I tried to get rid of some of the apps on my phone. Um, you know, it's just it's just a crazy. It's not an endless scroll, but it's a lot. That's a lot of apps on my phone. So yeah, I think that's. Uh, lime, lime wire, lime wire. I don't know if it still even exists. It probably does in some form, but, uh, but I think it was Metallica that kind of put the kibosh on that one. <laughs> uh, a lot of people got mad at them. And I was like, why? They made music. They want you to pay for it. They were a little, uh, they were a little, uh, annoying about it, but I was, I was with them on the, the content of their argument. So, uh, okay. All right, guys. So hopefully, you know, I, I hope this was fun. This was not, uh, not a lot of new stuff. I, we could have talked about CNN plus, and maybe I'll make a video about that next week. Um, but today I really just wanted to kind of go through the, the Roku thing and, and get your take on this kind of, I wanted to see how you guys thought about, um, you know, spring cleaning your devices or, you know, whatever, just cleaning them out at whatever time of year. Uh, so this was this was a lot of fun for me. Oh my gosh, Napster. Yes, Napster. Uh, so this is a lot of fun for me and I hope it was fun for you guys. It's always fun to do these uh, live streams and get the interaction with you fine folk on YouTube and on Facebook. So yeah, thanks for joining me. Don't forget, uh, by the way, just one more time, go to reviews.org slash giveaways, um, $50 Amazon gift card. You can enter to win that and it's easy. There's really nothing to it. You just go in, put your name, email address and and that's it. So, uh, so yeah, please go check that out. The link is in the description, the description, the description, whatever. Um, let's see. All right. So yeah, again, thank you for watching and I will see you next week for some video or another, uh, go on and support reviews.org. If you're on TikTok. um, I just made a TikTok. I think it'll be up today or maybe tomorrow. I can't, I can't remember when it's going up, like how to watch the Grammys, you know, stuff like that. We do a little fun, uh, stupid stuff on TikTok. Uh, so go check that out. Um, obviously when you see videos come up on YouTube, whether they're shorts or full length videos, uh, please give them a like, um, and share if, if, the, if there's a video that you feel like, Oh, you know, that might be worth sharing, please share it. It's huge for us. Uh, it's, it's a big help to the channel. Um, it really helps us out quite a bit. Regardless, thanks for being here today, everybody, and I will see you next Friday at 2 p.m.